Now if you own a 3D printer then chances are you've had to connect two spools of filament together at some stage. Now there have been a few gadgets and gizmos out there that have tried to fix the problem of trying to connect two pieces of filament together. But they all seem to miss the mark because they're super finicky to use and the results are generally not very good. And then along came the Sun Lu filament connector. Now at the time there wasn't really anything like it. So after watching quite a few YouTube videos and going through the reviews on if people liked it or not, I was pretty confident that this was going to be the solution to all my problems. Now you may be wondering what's the point in even having a filament connector when we have technology like the AMS, where it basically just swaps over to the next spool as soon as one spool runs out. But the problem with that is if you're printing a decorative piece or something where the top finish or outside walls are super important to be looking nice there is a chance that when it does that spool swap it's going to be resuming on one of the outside walls and it could potentially leave a pock mark there or something that just doesn't look very nice and ruin the entire print this isn't really a problem for functional parts where you don't really care what it looks like but welding your filament together is really the only option if you want to guarantee to have a perfect outside finish you can tell that the R&D team from Sunlu took all of the best elements from all the different filament welding techniques and shoved them into this but I feel like when the Sunlu team were testing their product to see if it actually worked, they were testing it in the wrong way. Now the Sunlu filament connector works really well if you have two separate pieces of filament that aren't connected to a spool. You basically just slot them in, wait for it to beep, and it's done. But when you try and use it with two spools, the results are questionable. The grip pads they have on these things are useless. I placed the spools upside down to each other to see if they would affect the tension, and the device couldn't even stay straight. But even when you have your spools positioned correctly, the tension is still too strong for the PTFE tubing, and the whole thing ends up bending down the middle and ruining the connection. And if you don't believe me, then check out this great video from Uncle Jesse. He initially tries to fuse two small pieces together, separated from the spool, and oh, it works perfectly. And then he tries to fuse two spools together, and surprise, surprise, it didn't work. Now, for most of us in the real world, we're not gonna be connecting two tiny pieces of filament together. We're gonna be connecting two spools together. But with spools comes tension. And this tension makes this tool extremely difficult to use. Also, because there's no cooling function on the device, as soon as you open that heated cover, the plastic is still really hot and soft and makes it very difficult to keep that connection firm and strong when it's still melting. Now, I was extremely close to throwing this in the bin, but I had a look online to see if anyone else was having problems like me. And fortunately, the 3D printing community comes to the rescue again. Now, I was actually surprised to see how many options there were to try and fix this problem, with all these other people having exactly the same problem as me. So user error, I think not. So I printed out a couple of different designs to see which one would work best. I chose designs that were easy to print, didn't require any additional parts, and looked fairly easy to use. So let's go through some of them and see if they can fix the problem. So this is the first design I tried. It was a type of clamping system where you thread a spool into each end, then connect them in the middle with the PTFE tube. It was a much more manual approach, and after trying it, I realized that I couldn't keep it steady enough at the end, which caused the filament not to weld properly together. So the next design I tried looked very simple and seemed like it could work well, but it had one major design flaw. There was no way to remove the filament after you'd fused it together, meaning that the only way to get it out was to separate it again. <laughs> On to the next one. Now this design was actually pretty cool, and other than looking like a robot, resistance is futile, it also didn't work very well, as the arms were too loose, resulting in a poor connection of the two filaments. And then I tried this design. It seemed to be the most sturdy out of them all and even had hinges to keep the filament in place and prevent it from moving after it was fused together. Once I placed the Sunlu connector in, the groove seemed to line up well and I gave it a go. As you can see, the filament remains perfectly still when opening the lid and when compared to the Sunlu connector without this device, you can see that the bending problem is now gone. However, I was now faced with a new problem. The filament was still too hot when taking it out, resulting in bumps and deformed areas of the connection as soon as I touched it. So I tried a technique of removing the power, placing my fingers either side of the filament, then opening the lid very slowly, all in an effort to stop it from moving and deforming. And this kind of worked, but even though I was as delicate as I could be, 
the slightest movement formed a bump on one of the sides. So I MacGyvered a small fan I took off one of my Ender machines, but I could barely feel the airflow, most likely due to my extremely limited electrical experience. So I swapped to a PC fan with a USB cable already installed. I ran the fan as the unit heated up to see if it would affect it, but it didn't seem to, which was good. So I was able to leave the fan in place, turned on and ready for when I took the heated cover off. I actually got some pretty good results with this. So good in fact that when I was testing the strength, the fuse parts held out stronger than the filament itself. But it was annoying to have to place the fan and if I was going to use it as a permanent solution, I would have to incorporate it into the design of the system that I was using which would be time consuming and annoying. But then I had a random thought. What if I used the silicone tubing that I used to use when I was welding the filament together with the soldering iron? So I got out my silicone tubing, cut off a piece and put it on one of the ends. Here is a side by side comparison of the original PTFE tube versus the silicone one. Now I'd already tested this tubing and know that it feeds properly through the extruder. It was a bit thicker than the PTFE, which made it a little harder to close the lid, but after a firm push, it stayed closed and allowed me to push on either side of the filament. Now when I took it out for the first time, I was a little bit skeptical because I thought the tube might have been too thick and wouldn't have heated properly. But as soon as I moved the silicone tube aside, I saw that the seal was actually really, really good. I pulled on either end of the filament just to see how strong it was and it didn't break. So I thought, all right, this could have been a fluke. I'm going to do it again and see what happens. And this time I noticed that because of the thickness of the tube, it actually helped absorb a lot of that initial shock when you open up that heat cover, meaning that the tube will not bend at all and it's not going to deform the connection. You can see how perfect it is underneath this silicone tube. And once I reveal it, it looks really, really nice. It was just as strong as the last one. So I tried it for a third time and the same result. After cooling it down a little bit, the seam was perfect. It was extremely strong. There weren't any bumps or anything I need to sand away. This seemed like it was the solution that actually worked. And boy, it's <laughs> strong. I can't, I can't even break it apart. I think I found your solution. <laughs> So, Sunlu, if you're watching this, I have some recommendations for your version number two Sunlu filament welding connector thing. Replace your crappy PTFE tubes with higher quality silicone ones. Not only will this make your device work much better, but these are actually reusable. They don't deform easily, and by the looks of things, they're around the same price as what you're currently using. The second thing is a cooling fan, because as soon as you open that cover, the plastic is molten lava and it is still very soft and malleable. So if we could somehow implement a cooling fan into the device, that would be amazing. An option to disable the annoying beeping sounds. Now it's not too bad if you just use it once or twice, but when you have to listen to it over and over and over and over and over, it's incredibly irritating. Better gripping pads, because let's be honest, these little gripping pads are a bit of a joke. They don't actually grip anything and you may as well not even have them on there. I'm not quite sure why these are even here. So if you're gonna try and put these on, at least make them work. Thanks for watching, hope this video has been helpful and I'll see you in the next video.